Konnichiwa! SNK's Neo Geo AES was the most powerful arcade home console you could own, but it was so expensive, few gamers actually owned one. And so we saw SNK port a number of their successful arcade titles over to the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis. And in today's show, we're going to be looking at every single one of those games that came from the Neo Geo over to the Sega Mega Drive. My name's Mike, and this is the Retro Gamer Boy Show. Welcome back to the Retro Gamer Boy Show. Before we jump into every single Neo Geo game that was ported to the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive, it would be great if you could help out the channel and its community by liking this video and also leaving a comment below. That lets the YouTube gods know that this is a video they should check out if you're a Mega Drive and Genesis fan. Now there were a total of nine Neo Geo games that made their way to the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis. And all of them were released between 1993 and 1994. Now there are also two games that should get an honorable mention. The first is Street Smart. Now this game was an SNK game, but it predated the AES. And it came out on the Sega Genesis. It never saw a European release. The other is an R&D title where we're seeing Metal Slug being ported over to the Sega Mega Drive. Now this port is ongoing, but it's looking pretty fantastic. The Mega Drive could really push some sprites. Now what we see here is no additional bad guys on the screen. We see some drops in frame animation, and of course the color palette's reduced, but the backgrounds look pretty nice and some of the animation they've introduced on the bad guys here look pretty decent. It'd be awesome if we got a homebrew version of Metal Slug on the Sega Mega Drive. So fingers crossed. Now of the nine Neo Geo games that were ported to the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis, only five of them would make their way over to Europe. Another two would be exclusive for the Genesis and all nine were available on the Sega Genesis. You have just been invaded by Sega TV! Now the five games that made it over to Europe on the Sega Mega Drive, I own four of them. And the first one we're going to be taking a look at is Fatal Fury. Now most of the games that were ported from the Neo Geo over to the Genesis and Mega Drive were actually published by Takara. And whilst Takara was the publisher for these games, they often used a number of developers to actually take on this mammoth task of porting arcade perfect gameplay over to the relatively underpowered Sega Mega Drive and Genesis. And for the first Fatal Fury game, that would be Gaybrain. Now, Fatal Fury on the Sega Mega Drive is not a bad conversion or port of the original Neo Geo version. And in fact, if you check out the visuals and sound from the game, it's a pretty amazing achievement that they managed to get something like this running on the 16-bit console at all. For the most part, it stays true to its arcade and AES counterpart. The characters are all in there. We've got some nice looking sprites, really big ones on the screen, especially for games coming out at that time period. And the backgrounds are pretty stunning for a Sega Mega Drive game. But as you'd expect, there's less frames of animation, there's slowdown in there, and it's not quite the arcade experience. But if you had a Sega Genesis or Mega Drive and could get your hands on Fatal Fury at the time, I don't think you would have cared much. You had Fatal Fury, an arcade game, a stunning looking arcade game, in your house, on your home console. Now Fatal Fury would be followed up with Fatal Fury 2, and probably the best port in the series to come over to the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis. This came out a year later in 1994, and for some complete unknown reason, Fatal Fury 2 didn't make it to Europe. In fact, the only PAL copy that you can get is an Australian version where the game was actually released. Apart from that, Fatal Fury 2 made it to every other territory that the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive supported.
Art of Fighting is the last game that I need to get to get the entire Neo Geo collection that was released here on the Sega Mega Drive in the UK. Released in 1994, Takara again was the publisher for this title. Unlike Fatal Fury, Art of Fighting was a more story-led fighter, and it was one of my all-time favourites when I used to play it in the arcades. It had some stunning visuals in it. Now, those stunning visuals have made their way almost intact over to our 16-bit console. It is one of the best-looking games, in my opinion, on the Sega Mega Drive to come from the Neo Geo range. It maintains large sprites, it has those awesome backgrounds in there, and you would never think that the Mega Drive had a problem with color palettes when you look at a game like this. It is an absolutely fantastic port over from the Neo Geo to the Sega Mega Drive. If you can afford it, if you can get your hands on a copy, I would definitely recommend picking up Art of Fighting. Next up, we've got King of the Monsters, and this is a fantastic little brawler. Now, it hasn't made its way perfectly over from the Neo Geo onto the Sega Mega Drive. A lot of sacrifices have had to be made, and for some, it doesn't have the gameplay they would have hoped for on the actual system. Taking place in a pixel version of Tokyo, you take your huge monster on a brawl through the city as you smash buildings and destroy cars, trying to take out your foe. And for me, it was the first game I ever played where you had a rhino horn beetle. The game came out in 1993 and was developed by SPS and would be followed up the following year with King of the Monsters 2. But not in Europe, it would only come out on the Genesis. Now, King of the Monsters 2's port from the Neo Geo over to the Mega Drive had to make a number of sacrifices, and one of those was the gameplay and amount of freedom that you had to move around the map. But for the most part, it stayed intact and is a pretty good port of the game that you could play on the Neo Geo and in the arcades. World of Heroes ported from the Neo Geo over to only the Sega Genesis by Sega Midwest Studios in 1994. And for the life of me, I don't understand why this game didn't make it over to us here in Europe. Unlike a lot of these ports from the Neo Geo, it was a pretty decent one again for the Sega Mega Drive. And when we compare it to the Super Nintendo version, whilst the Super Nintendo version has a few more colours and animated sprites in it, it held up pretty well. Especially when you take a look at the sprites for the characters. They're a lot bigger on the Sega Mega Drive. World of Heroes was a fun little fighter, and it would have been great to have that as a worldwide release. Samurai Showdown, one of my all-time favourite ports of a Neo Geo game to my 16-bit Sega Mega Drive. Again, Takara was the publisher, but Saris was the actual developer for this game, and they'd done a stunning job with this port, especially when you compare it to the SNES. And if we lean a little bit into the console wars here, I would say that the port of Samurai Showdown on the Sega Mega Drive when compared to the Super Nintendo absolutely blows that Super Nintendo version away. The job they did with this game is fantastic. The sprites in it are huge, the animations are great, and the gameplay is fluid and pretty true to the original. Like I said, one of my all-time favorite fighters on the console, and one of the first fighters to actually introduce weapons into its gameplay. Viewpoint. Ah, oh, Viewpoint. I love that shmup. Unfortunately, I wouldn't get to play it until it came out on the PlayStation 1. It actually came out on the Sega Genesis, and it was an exclusive for the Sega Genesis. This fantastic shmup had some great visuals where they created 2D sprites to look like 3D objects, and had a really nice perspective to the whole game. It wasn't your standard 2D side-scroller. In fact, it had a third-person perspective on the actual game. Again, another one of these Neo Geo ports, which would have been so great to have over here in Europe. Now, the ninth and last game to be ported over to the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis from the Neo Geo collection was this one over here. 
Super Baseball 2020. The game was actually ported by New FX, and New FX was a studio that worked extremely closely with EA and porting a number of games on the EA label over to the 16-bit consoles. And of course, it was published by Electronic Arts. Now for me, Super Baseball 2020 is probably the only baseball game that I've really enjoyed and the only one I've really played. I love the setting for it, the visuals, the characters. It made for such a great game and for me, not a baseball follower, it kind of made it more accessible, much in the same way as the Mutant League games did for American football and for hockey as well. But a stunning game, a little pricey to get hold of nowadays, but definitely worth getting it. So there we go, from the most powerful arcade home console you could own to one of the earliest home arcade consoles you could buy. The Sega Mega Drive wasn't the most powerful, didn't display the most colors, but the Neo Geo ports that came over to it were just fantastic. They didn't come even close to being arcade perfect. But if you were a Genesis owner or a Mega Drive owner, you probably didn't care. You were playing these arcade classics in your home and it didn't cost you hundreds and hundreds of dollars to buy an arcade perfect home console or hundreds of dollars to even buy the game. I'd love to know what you think of Neo Geo games that were ported over to the Sega Mega Drive. Did you even know that the Neo Geo had games on the Mega Drive itself? If you're new to the channel and you'd love what you've seen today, then why not consider subscribing by clicking on a little button just below this video. And we make brand new videos every single Monday. And so you never miss an episode, you can click on a bell which is also just below this video. And if you can't wait until next Monday, don't worry, because we've got a huge back catalogue of retro gaming videos, two of which you can see over here.